What I mean is that you can edit the stroke in real After Effects 3D space. In my last video, I showed to you a workaround that enables shape layer strokes to exist in After Effects 3D space. And this opened up new possibilities. My version of a 3D stroke can not only interact with the camera, it also can have all the extras of a shape layer stroke. And you can navigate in After Effects 3D space to edit the path. And that's not even possible with commercial 3D stroke plugins from giant companies. Just kidding, I also use their products. Anyway, let's jump right into After Effects. Because After Effects doesn't have a 3D grid option in the viewport, I took this background over from my previous tutorial, which basically consists of 3D solids, each one with a grid effect. I'm gonna use it here to show you later that you can manipulate the 3D stroke in the After Effects 3D space for real. By the way, my composition size is 4K, 3840 by 2160 pixels. Before we start, let me reset the default camera and hide these layers. Grab the pen tool and draw a zigzag line with like 5 points. Then open the shape layer, content, shape, delete fill, open stroke and set line cap to round cap and line join to round join. Then open path 1, select the path, go to window, open up the create nulls from path script and click on the points follow nulls button, which creates null layers you can position the path points with. It also adds these drop down menus to the shape layers effect controls, which refer to the null layers. As I explained in my last video, this step is essential to translate the 2D shape layer strokes to the 3D space. Please watch this video if you want to get deeper into the steps I explain here. Enable 3D just for the null layers, select null layers 2 to 5 and parent them to null 1, which makes it easier for us to control the whole rig. To keep the setup clean and tidy, take another label color, like fuchsia, and label it controller. Then reset its position to center it and rotate it like this so the stroke goes towards the camera. You can now take the null layers and roughly define where the path goes. Because we don't want a zigzag but an organic stroke, apply a round corners operator to the shape layer. Open round corners and increase the radius until the corners are smoothed out. Open taper and set end length to 100. In my case the stroke width is 40, but you can set a value you like. When you want to animate the stroke, add a trim paths operator and animate its parameters. In my case I'm gonna animate the start value to let the stroke swoosh into the center and the end value to make it disappear. Before we add a glow, set a color that is not fully saturated, rather bright. Apply a fast box blur effect to the shape layer and increase the blur radius to 250. Add a CC composite effect and uncheck RGB only. This way we restore the stroke and put it over the blurred stroke. Then apply a glow effect, set glow threshold to 80% and glow radius to 100. To boost the glow, copy these bunch of effects and paste them below. But the second fast box blur radius should be lower, like 100, and the second CC composite set to add. To merge it with the background, set blending mode to add as well. In short, you can create a nice glow by repeatedly stacking up the layer with decreasing blur radius. Now the moment you've been waiting for. How does it actually look like in 3D space? Select the dolly tool to dolly back a bit, then take the orbit tool and orbit around the scene. And here is the proof. It's a stroke you can even edit as if it's a real 3D stroke. Those of you who've seen my previous tutorial know that it's actually a trick to fake 3D. Now that the rig is finished, you can duplicate it and put it on top of the timeline. When we rotate the new controller, nothing happens. That's why we should select the new shape layer and adjust the drop down menus to the new null layers. Then rotate the view with the orbit tool like this, adjust the null layers positions to make them look unique, 
and change the color. Let's repeat it for a third stroke. Again, rotate the view, duplicate the rig, rotate the controller, adjust the drop-down menus, and change the color. The best part of it is, because they are shape layer strokes, you can apply extras to it. For example, you can apply a wiggle paths operator and play around with the parameters. Or maybe add a repeater. Again, adjust the values until you are happy with the result. Copy it and paste them into the other shape layers. When you feel the glow is too strong, an easy way to lower it is to select all shape layers and decrease the stroke width. Doesn't look so overexposed now. If you want, you can animate a camera. In my case, I link a camera to a new null layer and animate its rotation. Hit play. Looks quite decent, but the trim animation is a bit choppy. That's because the trim operator needs to be after the wiggle paths operator. So drag the trim paths operator below the wiggle paths operator for each shape layer. Hit play again. Looks better now. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If so, please don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.